Welcome to SIMA managerial level lecture series. Today's subject is advanced financial reporting and today is the first lecture related to the subject which is long term finance and my name is Vidya Rajvasam. So let us discuss the long term finance. Why do you need long term finance? And we will be discussing further into the requirements, what are the structure and how the long term finance is organized in an organization. So let us start the, the lecture process. First of all we will look at why companies need finance. There can be companies where they have lot of excess cash and those cash can be invested in various different projects which the, the organization wish to make invest and make profits. Most of the organizations in reality does not have lot of surplus cash. So therefore the need arises for a external financing sources. So there are several options available for external finances. So let us look at what are the sources of external finance. So let us look at the sources of external finance. Uh, the main sources are capital markets, bank borrowings and government sources. So capital markets are related to share issues, rights issues and marketable debt. Bank borrowings are related to long term and short term loans given by the banks and the government sources are there can be government grants or government sus subsidies. If you explain this again the long term finance basically divided into equity finance and the debt finance. So let us discuss the equity finance. So what is equity? Equity can be defined as the ownership rights of a business organization. Then what do you mean by a share or the equity share? Share can be identified or defined as a identifiable fixed unit of capital in an entity which generally has a normal nominal value. So the SIMA definition of equity finance is a fixed identifiable unit of capital in an entity which normally has a fixed nominal value which may be quite different from its market value. So the types of equity shares, so equity shares can be ordinary shares or preference shares. So let us discuss about the ordinary shares and what are the characteristics of ordinary shares. Ordinary shares basically the ordinary shareholders are the owners of the company and the owners being owners they have the right to attend to the company meetings especially annual general meeting. And the ordinary shareholders have the right to vote for important matters concerning the organization and also ordinary shareholders receive dividend as per the direction of entities directors. Furthermore ordinary shareholders receive dividends as per the direction of entities directors or the director board. In addition if you look at in a liquidation process equity shareholders are subordinate to the other finance providers. Now let us look at the preference shares. Preference shareholders basically receive a fixed amount of dividend. Now this dividend amount is based on as a percentage of a nominal value of the share and preference shares receive dividend with the preference over the ordinary share dividend. Furthermore the preference shareholders are subordinate to 
debt holders or creditors in a situation where the liquidation is concerned, first the debt holders and the creditors will get paid, then the preference shareholders will get paid. But it is important to understand after preference holders get their share of the company only the ordinary shareholders are going to receive their payouts. Then let us discuss what are the types of preference shares. One we can look at it as cumulative preference shares. So, what are the characteristics of this cumulative preference shares? Start from the beginning, this cumulative preference shares also preference shares, but these basically receive dividend on an annual basis. And if there is a skipping of dividend payments for a particular year, due to the losses or any other factors, what will happen is this amount of dividend is carried through to the next financial year. And in the next financial year, the skipped dividend will be paid along with the, the next year's dividend payment. Now, that now let us look at uh, another type of uh, preference shares that is called the uh, non-cumulative preference shares. Again, the dividend has to be paid annually and non-cumulative the difference is it avoids the payment of skipped dividend. Then there is another category called participating preference shares, again entitled to a fixed dividend, but extra earnings there is a condition here, extra earnings based on certain conditions or the meeting of certain conditions only the participating preference shareholders get their dividend. The last one is the convertible preference shares. Again, being a preference shareholder, they will receive a fixed amount of dividend. But the advantage you have here is the convertible preference shares can be exchanged for a specific number of ordinary shares on a future date. Let us go through again the cumulative shares because not like the ordinary shares, you have different types of cumulative shares. So, we have already discussed, but let us go little bit beyond. What happens is you know why a company issues preference shares? The, the basis of issuing preference shares is to attract some important shareholders. So, in order to attract this, the companies have created several types of preference shares. One good example we already discussed is that you know cumulative preference shares. So, the importance here is not like the ordinary share, there will be a percentage or a fixed amount that can be offered to the shareholder not like the ordinary shareholder because for example, ordinary shareholders the directors have the discretion of giving a certain percentage, but when it comes to preference shareholders there is always a fixed amount of fixed percentage of dividend that has to be paid. So, in this context the preference shares are more similar to debt, marketable debt, because they similar to marketable debt, the percentage of interest or percentage of the dividend under the preference shares is fixed. So, it is not basically based on the discretion of the shareholders. So, let us move on to uh, the number of preference shares that we have. So, the cumulative preference shares basically what happens is even though from the word cumulative means if in one particular financial year the dividend was not paid, this whatever the dividend amount will be carried forward to the next financial year. So, as the word 
identify this correctly, so the, the dividend is cumulatively accrued and paid in a particular year where it should be paid. Then the difference between the cumulative and non-cumulative is the non-cumulative preference shares avoids the skipped dividend payment. So then here in this context basically the, the company gets the benefit because the dividends are paid without this cumulative part. So therefore for uh, example in a one particular financial period if the dividend is not paid then there is no need to pay in the next financial year whatever the accumulated dividend. The, the other type of the share that we have already discussed is the participating preference shares. Here the difference is the, there, we, there is a separate uh, extra earnings that can be ascertained, but the shareholders and the directors have agreed on certain conditions. So these are the, the basic uh, nitty gritties of issuing preference shares for a particular company because not like the ordinary shareholders, they need these preference shareholders to have the have to have those shareholders to maintain certain status or certain uh, level of uh, participation so the last one we can discuss is again that you know the con convertible preference shares again similar that you know every preference shareholder will get a fixed amount of dividend as a percentage of the share value but uh, what is more important here is that this the dividend earning convertible uh, preference shares can be exchanged to number of specific number of uh, ordinary shares on a future date. Now we have completed the first session of the long term finance, let us move on to the review part, we will review this whatever we have learned through MCQ questions and we will start that from the next slide. So let us uh, review the MCQ for the long term finance related to the first session of the lecture program. So the first question is which three of following characteristics related to a equity shares are true, some of the statements are false. So let us go through this uh, five numbers of uh, characteristics that we are going to discuss and see which is true and which is false. Point number A is a fixed unit of capital, whether it is part of the equity share or not. Uh, it provides fixed annual return, let us see whether it is true or not, has a fixed nominal value, preference over debt holders and quite different from its market value. So what will be the correct answer? Let us see. So the correct answer is what is true? With regard to the equity shares is basically it has a fixed unit of capital that is correct, but it does not provide a fixed annual return right? because we are talking about equity shares and, and also it has a fixed nominal value which is the, the value of the share and also it is quite different from the market value of the share because the shares can be issued at 10 rupees, but once the company makes lot of profits and it is traded in the stock exchange, the market value may not be 10 rupees after 2, 3 years time. So let us move on to the second uh, MCQ question, following statements are true related to preference shares. 
here we are trying to discuss about the preference shares. So the first thing is in preference shares are entitled to a fixed dividend payout subordinate to ordinary shareholders paid out of post tax profits provides tax benefit to the company and subordinate to debt holders and creditors. So what will be the answer? Let us go to the next slide and check on that. So the answer is going to be preference shareholders are entitled to a fixed dividend payout, but they are not subordinate to ordinary shareholders. And the next other correct answer is it is paid out of post tax profits. So difference here is preference shares are more similar because it is paid on a fixed percentage, but debt, debt whatever the payments are going to be after tax not post tax. So therefore yeah, paid out of uh, it has to be paid out of post tax profits. Then also what is not true is the preference shares does not provide tax benefit to the company. But if you look at the debt financing it provides the tax benefit to the company. And the last correct answer is it is subordinate to debt holders or creditors in case of a liquidation. So now we have finished the first part of the lecture and we have discussed or reviewed the, the content of the lecture or the knowledge of the uh, lecture through two, three MCQs. Now let us move on to the next part in the lecture related to long term finance. Okay, so we have reviewed a few MCQs. So now it is time to look at the next part of the long term finance. In this section we will discuss about the capital markets. So what are these capital markets? So capital markets basically includes the shares of listed or quoted companies and these shares are traded in these capital markets. First thing is the listing and also the second part is the trading. So in this context the capital markets fulfill several functions. One we call it primary function, the second one is called this secondary function. So now let us look at what are these primary functions and secondary functions related to a capital market. So the primary function is basically enabling the companies to raise new finance. So the new finance can be either equity finance or debt finance. Also the one of the functions of the primary market is it facilitates the communication with large pool of investors. So the investors may be willing to make equity investments or debt investments. So the advantage of or the, the activity of a primary function of a capital market is to facilitate this communication between this large group of investors. And the secondary market is where the investors are able to sell their investments to prospective future customers which is called the trading. So the primary function is basically the listing and availability of equity shares or debt to the investors. Then the secondary function is the trading. So for example if I bought any shares because of this secondary function I will be able to sell those shares to some other investors through this secondary function. The advantage of this secondary function is the shares of these listed companies are more marketable than the unlisted company shares. So now what are the examples 
of uh, capital markets and also uh, how these uh, stock exchanges are, con are handling all these uh, capital market issues. Let us look at those. So, let us look at the functions of capital markets. One function is we have basically uh, listed already, but we can discuss further on this which is called the stock exchange listing. So, the stock exchange listing basically enables a limited uh, liability company to sell its shares to the public. So, when uh, a limited liability company wanted to sell its shares to the public, the first time when a company is going to get listed in a stock exchange, that activity is known as flotation or IPO. So, what is IPO? IPO is the initial public offering. So, which will be this is related to a, the first time a company wanted to sell its shares to the public and the listing is called listing in the stock exchange for the first time is called the flotation or initial public offering. So, let us look at the advantage of listing. So, the market will provide more accurate valuation of the company that is one advantage. Now, why how this happens let us discuss because once you list your shares in a stock exchange there will be forces related to demand and supply. If the company is performing very well, then automatically the demand for those shares will increase. So, how this demand is created through the performance of the company basically. So, then the, the, the advantage I am trying to indicate here is once the company's shares are listed ultimately with this demand and supply conditions and also the company performance the shareholders will be able to get an accurate valuation of the company. So, next move on to the, the next one the next advantage if you look at a normal company there is no requirement to pay the paper profits or pay profits identify in the income statement, but in capital markets or when you list the company it is important or it is a mandatory thing that the profits has to be distributed among the shareholders. So, therefore, when you try to distribute you will be able to realize the paper profits. Let us look at the another advantage. So, this listing mechanism provided for buying and selling some of shares at will in the future. For example, if I created a company and I have the shares are listed in the uh, stock exchange, what happens is the company owners also has the will to purchase those shares from the stock market itself. So, that is again the, the listing provides that mechanism instead of holding on to shares the shareholders can even sell the shares or buy the shares from the stock exchange. The another advantage is it provides the base to raise profile of the company. In, so, this is basically you know when you raise the profile of the company or its performance the impact on that is it raises the credibility of the company. Once the company's credibility is raised, there will be raise of revenues long term. Also, the, the ability for the long term providers of finance also will understand this is a credible, credible company. So, therefore, it is better to provide long term finance. Now, this is where the banks and other financial institutions can take this opportunity to provide long term finance to a listed company, because they know that 
one is their performance is properly evaluated there will be more shareholders buying and selling and this creates the the higher credibility and the higher credibility will allow the long term finance providers to give finance to these listed companies so it's the same thing that uh, again here i have indicated because what happens is once uh, the company is listed it will basically establish uh, credibility and also uh, the performance of the company so which will allow basically the long term uh, finance providers to establish good relationships and also provide finance for these listed companies another advantage is because of this listing and also raising awareness and communication between the uh, investors and stock brokers all of these people the company is able to raise additional finances for the future investments so raising additional finances are related to you can say that it's a rights issue if a company wants to to make additional finances for their future investments the because of the listing the companies will be able to raise finance through rights issues furthermore what is another important uh, factor is in listing is uh, the companies will be basically uh, allowed to uh, have employee share schemes and basically it provides the base for employee share schemes because uh, companies uh, shares are listed in the stock exchange so if the company wanted to motivate the employees basically they can say okay we have a share option scheme available and you will be given company shares which is at the current market rate so which is a very big benefit to the organization because employees are also becoming part of the shareholders so which is possible because of the listing of the company now we have discussed the advantages of the the capital markets and also the stock exchange listing let's look at some disadvantages of this uh, process so one of the disadvantages is the underwriting or the flotation costs are too costly for small companies if it is a big company yes they can afford to pay a big amounts generally this underwriting and flotation costs are percentage of the amount of money that you are going to raise so if you are going to raise millions of rupees 3% uh, of that can be a costly issue for a small company another disadvantage is loss of controls for original owners basically if you look at the smaller companies the owners are maybe one or two owners are there and throughout the history of the company these people are managing this company what will happen now if the company is listed then there will be more shareholders coming and they have their own view points own ideas and there there can be some innovative ideas telling you no know, to do this process or maybe go for a new market then what happens is the original owners will have a little bit of a conflict where you know they they lose control over the managing of the company the another disadvantage is uh, because of the listing there are strict reporting requirements if you look at a normal private company there are no specific guidelines or rules when it comes to reporting but when it comes to the listing of a company there are strict reporting rules that has to be met and the timelines are given furthermore you can say one of another disadvantage is this the, the process itself the listing process may, has lot of stringent rules and also there are regulations monitored by stock exchange so 
this is also a disadvantage for a smaller company which is trying to come into the listing level where it has to go to go through stringent rules and regulations of the stock exchange. So, now we have discussed the advantages and disadvantages of listing a company. Uh, now, let us look at the UK capital markets. Since we are studying SIMA, it is basically we are studying the UK capital markets. So, let us look at the what are these UK capital markets. So, in, in if you look at the UK capital markets, there are two important capital markets. One is called the UK stock exchange, other one is called the alternative investment market. So, let us see in detail these issues. So, what is this UK stock market? UK stock market basically has a large number of companies and also they are very large companies. So, these large companies basically control this part of the stock exchange and how do you, how do they control basically it is related to high entry costs because it is not a small company will not be able to come into the uk stock exchange because of these barriers so the one of the barriers is high entry cost but there are advantages also if you come into the stock exchange because due to high profile status these shares are extremely marketable. For example, a smaller company which has good performance, if that can come into the UK stock exchange, it creates a very high profile status. And this profile, high profile status basically supports this company to market the shares. So, it is extremely marketable. So, now let us look at the alternative investment market. So, alternative investment market is basically available for the, the smaller companies and the associated costs are small and it is lower and also it has less stringent entry requirements. So, what happens is like if you are a private company, it is first step in listing is basically you move into the alternative investment market. then you perform in that particular market for a certain period of time and if the performance is okay and revenues are increasing, balance sheet strength is growing and new investments coming in, then you can afford for this high cost and also the reputation of moving into a uh, UK stock exchange. Now, we have discussed the next session of the capital markets, let us uh, look at now who will advise in a share issue. All the capital markets are talking about what we are talking about is related to issue of shares or listing of shares. So, then who is going to advise us in a share issue? One is investment banks, other one is stock brokers. The, the last one is institutional investors. So, how come these investment banks are supporting us? One is these investment banks, they have legal advisors because what happens is from a smaller company, private company, if you want to list, there are some legal regulations has to be met. So, the investment banks basically provides that information. And also investment banks has lot of stock brokers who are connected. So, when you want to do your IPO initial public offering, the investment bank has all the connections and the network. So, what happens is investment bank is basically going to help the, the smaller company to accumulate or to get their uh, the stock portfolio advertised or available that information is available through stock brokers to the general public. The similar manner stock brokers basically deal with lot of investors. 
So these investors basically are in the portfolio of stockbrokers uh, investment portfolio. So therefore, if it is a, a initial public offering, stockbrokers will promote a particular company's shares into other stockbrokers and also to institutional investors. The other one is even in a share issue, the advice we can get from an institutional investors also. Because institutional investors are the, the big uh, corporates where they invest in millions of pounds or millions of rupees in the stock exchange. So they also has lot of experience in handling stock exchange transactions. So basically because of that experience and the large volume they handle, we will be able to basically get some advice from those institutional investors. Now we have re reviewed the long term finance uh, lecture, first session and the second session. Uh, after the first session we have discussed the review MCQs and also this is the second part of the lecture review MCQs. So let us uh, go through one by one. The question asks money market where the debt and stocks are traded and maturity period is more than a year is classified as. So in a money market where the debts and stocks are traded and maturity period is more than one year is classified as which name? Shorter term market, capital markets, counter markets or long term markets? Let us look at the answer that is called the capital markets. Right. Let us go to the next uh, review question. In capital markets, major players of the trading instruments are who? Is it uh, liquid corporations, instrumental corporations, manufacturing corporations or government and other corporations? So let us look at the answer. The answer is government and corporations. Government is also one of the, the, the big people who wanted to buy shares in stock exchange. And also the corporations, those are called institutional investors. They are the major players in a stock market. Then let us go into the primary markets. A characteristic of shares which is made easy to sell newly issued uh, security is considered as increased in liquidity, decreased in liquidity, money flow or large funds. So this is basically related to a fundamental question and let us see what is the answer for that. The answer is increased liquidity. Summary of the lecture today. We have discussed the equity finance and under that we have discussed the ordinary shares and preference shares. Then we discussed the capital market functions, advantages and disadvantages of capital markets and also we have discussed finally UK capital market. We have come to the end of our lecture related to uh, long term finance and uh, I will see you in another lecture related to uh, subject advanced financial reporting and thank you for your participation.